finally a company who put some thought into making a portable solar panel. Now, are these perfect? No, but they are pretty darn nice. And not to mention after using them for a few days, I think these are definitely a new favorite. The new 220 watt and also 400 watt are basically like a semi-rigid or a rigid type panel, but it can collapse and fold into a very tight spot and they don't weigh very much. The large 400 watt panel only weighs about 30 pounds while the small panel only weighs a little over 17. Now both of these open and deploy really quick. It only takes about 45 seconds to open up both of these, get them set and ready, and then you just connect your cable. But when it comes to closing them up, it is really quick. It only takes about 15 seconds, and then this thing is ready to be put back in its storage bag, which is really nice. It has an extra pouch, that way you can put your cables in it if you need to. And it is something that will keep the solar panels from getting damaged or dirty. That way, at least they kind of stay nice for a while. Now, there are a couple cons that we are going to talk about as I show you in the video. I'm going to show you some test footage of how these panels did. I'll compare one other panel as well. I don't have a 220 watt, but I am going to show you this Ugreen 200 watt panel just to kind of throw it in the mix and then after we're done testing these we'll come back talk a little bit about the cons and then see if these are a good option for you okay so i have both of these panels out here sitting in the sun they're getting heat soaked that way we get more of a real world number if you see people just open these up and then take a test right away without letting them heat soak, well, you're going to get a better number and it's going to be not really realistic. So it's best to let them sit out here for a little bit and then we'll go ahead and test it in just a couple more minutes. And as far as solar irradiance, as of right now, I am just about at peak. So we should be able to get a thousand watts meter square or more out of our light meter just to make sure we're giving it an accurate test. Now when you do STC testing, they tell you that you need at least a thousand watts meter square, and then you also want it to be 77 degrees. Well, that's not really realistic. So we're doing this under real world conditions where it's about 85, almost 90 degrees. That's what the high is gonna be today. It's about 1245 in the afternoon. Now I like to use several meters. That way I actually get more of an average versus just one because you never know what might be off, but this is showing us what our open circuit voltage is. And now you can see we're getting about 318 out of this panel, and that's because it's super hot. Now, if I had just opened this, it'd probably be about 360, 380. So this is more realistic of what you're going to get, 317.5. We'll also plug it into another meter just to make sure that this one is also accurate. Okay, so here's another one of our meters doing 286 right now. Now, again, I'm not at optimal angle. I'm just throwing this out on the grass just to kind of see what we get, and we'll play with the angle in a minute. Now, this is a pretty old meter. I've beat it up, and it's it's been kind of uh, used and abused, so that's why I like to use multiple things in order to kind of get an average. Now, utilizing a power station is another good way to kind of see where we're getting. About 293, 305, depending on, again, I might have some of those clouds or at least vapor trails from airplanes that have gone by, but about 315. Now we'll go ahead and see if we can get the angle a little bit more optimal. Now you guys don't need one of those fancy meters either. You can use a buddy of mine, Jason, at Jason Oid Channel. He always uses a can or you can just use, you know, your beer bottle or whatever it is you have handy. But once you see that that shadow is gone, that's an easy way to tell that you have the best alignment. But again, you're not really gonna have your panels always sitting like that. As the sun moves, it's gonna change constantly. And just to give you an idea, temperature about 140 as it's pretty much at optimal angle of the sun. If we look at the grass, also really hot. If we look at this panel, which is not at optimal angle, 129 degrees Fahrenheit. And just to show you what the concrete is, which I just stained and finished, 120. Now I do have these clouds that are passing by, so I'm gonna wait for a second or two, but I do have these now at an optimal angle. I utilize these brand new cushions that just happen to be on my porch right here. So I found that these were actually pretty handy to get a better angle. Now, what in lies a problem is the non-adjustable stands. As I was talking about earlier, there's a couple things that I didn't like. And this was one of them, is not having a way to adjust the uh, angle of the solar panel. Once those legs are deployed, you kind of get minimal adjustments as far as, you know, angling it up or down. So that was one of the cons that I found with this. And I'll show you the other one here in just a minute or two. And the numbers we are seeing now are these kind of middle 330s. I did see a 343 for a couple seconds that went back down to 335. 
So about the max of what we're getting, at least on this test, and again, it's about 90 degrees, and you can see that the temperatures of these panels are super hot. So if you wanted to calculate and do your coefficient numbers, we would probably be accurate as far as our output in this test. Because when you do the coefficient number, it's actually a certain percentage drop for every degree that you go above 77 degrees. And there's a whole formula on it and everything if you really wanted to read up on that. But we are probably about around the right amount of output for this temperature on the panel and the output that we have right now. I just wanted to show you guys one more test since it happens to be better conditions now. But we are now pulling in a little bit higher, around 360 watts. So not bad. And again, it's just thrown out there and that's how you're typically going to use it. You're going to throw it out and then just sit there and let it do its thing, you know, instead of just worrying about every single watt that's coming in. But 360 under a hot day like this with a little bit of haze, that's pretty good. Okay, as we move on, I did want to show you something one more time. Again, this thing is 139 degrees right here. And if we look at that metal bar, it's 156 degrees. Hence, if you noticed, I have a glove on because this will burn your hand. So something I was playing with the other day and I noticed how hot this got. Not to mention, of course, a grab handle. So that was one other con I found as well. I mean, again, the design of this thing is really, really cool and it's super easy to use, but those were two of the main cons that I've found so far. There is one more and we're gonna to point to that in just a minute. Okay, so now 220 and again, the legs are not really adjustable. So you can move them a little bit to just get a little bit of a different angle, but it's not much. We're gonna go ahead and see what our voltage is now. All right, so 22.1. And as we take a look at our output, as we run our little meter here, it's gonna do a test. 179.3, so not bad, considering this is also heat soaked. Getting our 10.23 amps, 178, almost 180. Okay, so first initial test, about 184 watts coming into the power station. And if we look at the meter, 170, 172. So kind of makes you wonder which one is more accurate, right? Again, this has been through a lot. So sometimes I don't exactly trust that considering we used a handheld meter earlier, which showed almost 180. And along with the power station also showing 180. I think this one's probably seen better days. Um, it at least gives us a little bit of information, but don't think it's quite accurate. Okay, and now utilizing those cushions again, we are now at an optimal angle. I have a pretty much perfect as far as how it's angled to the sun. All right, and on the power station, 185 roughly. So this isn't too bad. I mean, considering the conditions, 220 is our max. And again, if we were to go by temperature coefficients and do a correction, we're about accurate as far as what this panel really should output. Now, again, there's a lot of factors that come into these panels when you're testing. Obviously, you know, when you have your angle offset, it's not gonna put out as much. The temperature, not to mention conditions in the sky, those are all gonna play a factor in our output. So sometimes people are like, oh, that's not very good numbers. But if you think about the temperature, the angle, conditions of the sky, we're actually not doing too bad. Okay, and just a quick test on the Ugreen. Um, these panels I really wanted to like, but unfortunately, I mean, they're a nice design. They even have this little indicator to kind of show you. I mean, look how optimal it can get. You can just put the little dot in the center. It is a magnet panel, just like the other one. So when it closes, it's nice, but unfortunately the performance on this is pretty bad. I can never get 140 watts or better out of this. Most of the time it's about 130. 145 is max. It just doesn't put out any more than that. And for a 200 watt panel, 160s are minimum for something like this. So kind of a bummer really. Now here's test number one and then I'll optimize it. Now again, a little bit of haze up there. It'll probably start going back up in a second, but 120, this is on the lower side of what I see. Again, we have some haze. It's also not optimal angle, but whenever I do this test, again, I can never get more than about 140 out of it. Okay, now that the conditions have cleared up, this is about what I get out of the Ugreen panel. So again, about 142. Now it is really hot outside and I haven't really used these around the 50 or 60 degree mark. So you could get better, you know, output if you had cooler temps. But as of right now, this is just what I'm getting. Now, when it comes to shade testing, they did the right thing by making all of these panels in parallel. This makes it to where if one panel gets shaded, you only lose a small portion versus losing more than half or all of your solar panel if it was wired in series. This is a much better configuration for this type of situation. 
Now when looking at this temperature coefficient chart, you can see we're going to move this up to 33 degrees Celsius, about 90 degrees. We were getting our 1,000 watt meter squared and about 340 watts. As we take a look at one other chart, just to kind of verify, we're right in between 25 and 50 degrees C. And then if you look at the little line here, this shows us about 340 watts, which we did see higher than that. Okay, lightning round. So pros and cons. Pros, they open and set up quick. They take down quick. They're rigid, so they're really durable, and not to mention they're lightweight. Now, as far as their performance, they check out perfectly. So, and I will have another video coming out just after about the 1st of July because I'm taking these on a couple trips. And so I'll have more information to give you if you're still wondering about these solar panels. Now, as far as the cons go, well, they do get hot, but anything you have out in the peak of the day is going to be hot. So if you grab it, you just got to be careful. Now, as far as the legs not adjusting, that's not really that big of a deal. If you've used flexible solar panels enough, you kind of find that you set them out there and then you just forget about it. I used to set them out there, get them perfectly angled, go move them again two hours later, and now I don't do that anymore. It was just, you know, at first, you're kind of, it's like a new toy, right? So now I just set them out there. I'll move them one time later in the day just to get back into optimal angle and that's about it but when it does come to the wiring from the junction boxes to the next panel that looks like that could be something that you would be concerned about now i did talk to renergy and they said that this isn't a problem they've opened and closed the panels thousands of times during tests and it looks like it's easily repairable at least for me i could add a little bit of extra wire there solder on a piece or whatever and i would be good to go for others that might be a little bit harder now, Renogy did sponsor this video, so they did also provide discount codes if you're looking at buying one of these, or if you want to wait until after my next video, I can give you some more information on what I like and what I don't like. But so far, initial testing over the last few days, I really like these. These are probably the best flexible solar panels that are portable that I've ever used, to be honest. And I really like the design, how quick and simple they are to set up and take down. I think these are going to be a pretty big hit. Once more and more people see these, I think you'll see other companies kind of start doing this as well. So I hope this video helped you out. And if you guys have any questions, there's a link called Ask Me. And I hope to see you in the next video.